Since I first created this video, more details have come to light. I actually posted the video and then I went, hang on a minute, no, 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 this new information has just been revealed. So I removed the video from YouTube so that I could share with you the, the latest details. We know the battery pack size, battery chemistry, charging speed, towing, the amount of towing this truck can do, this ute can, can take, really, really good actually. So let's get to straight into the, straight into the numbers, range 430 kilometers. This is the standard version of this truck. There's apparently meant to be a, a solid, semi solid state battery version coming in the future, but the initial version you can, you'll be able to buy, I believe within the next six months, will be powered by a lithium ion phosphate battery, 103 kilowatt hour size battery pack. Not massive. To give you some context, the battery in the Cybertruck is 123 kilowatt hours. Now the Cybertruck does appear to be more efficient though, even though it's actually significantly bigger. The size of this vehicle is 5.5 meters long. So 430 kilometers of WLTP range. It's about, oh, about 300 miles of range, just under 300 miles. It's not too bad, but a lot less than what I think a lot of people are expecting. What else do we know? Well, the towing is actually pretty damn good. 3.5 ton towing. The actual weight you can carry in the bed's quite good as well. 1,000 kilograms, which is around about 2,200 pounds. It has a really cool frunk. I mean, I love the look of the frunk. It's electrified. It's 236 liters, which is 8.3 cubic feet frunk. And the absolute coolest feature of this vehicle, which was revealed, um, that I just saw this and went, wow, I really love this vehicle. I really do. The mid gate. It has a mid gate like the Chevy Silverado. So you can put down the back section. And this makes so much sense. I think all electric vehicles should, I mean, not all electric vehicles, but all electric pickup trucks, all electric utes should have this because there's no fumes, right? It makes sense. There's no exhaust tailpipe that's going to send all toxic fumes back into your car. Mid gate. That means you can put down the section of the vehicle behind the rear seats, which extends the entire vehicle, meaning you can store really, really long stuff. You can store things that are up to 2.4 meters long. That's 94.5 inches. So very, very similar to the Avalanche, uh, the mid-gate on the Avalanche, if you're familiar with that vehicle. Now, in terms of dimensions, 216.5 inches, 5.5 meters. It's actually quite a similar, very similar size to the Rivian R1T. So in fact, even the width is very, very similar to the Rivian R1T. It's actually quite wide. It's significantly wider, this vehicle, than a Ford Ranger or a Toyota Hilux. Speaking of the Ford Ranger and the Toyota Hilux, this is 5.5 inches or 140 millimeters longer than a Ranger and a Hilux. So it's kind of, kind of go after that market, like sort of like a baby Ford F-150 in a way. That's kind of a, Kind of a thing a lot of people I think are after. Now there's some other cool features here, aside from the mid gate, the frunk. Uh, there's also 20 storage compartments as well as an eight way power driver seat with ventilation and even massage functions. In addition, there is front seats that can be folded down to create a nearly flat sleeping surface that measures 67 inches long, that's 1.7 meters. The back seats actually fold down as well. And then with the mid gate, well, yeah, this would be a great vehicle for camping. Can you buy it? Well, yes. In fact, this is a global electric vehicle. But do you want to buy it? Well, all these things are great. I want to tell you in this video, a lot of the things I think that are fantastic, but there's one big drawback. That is the charging speed. I mean, this is a big battery, 102 kilowatt hour battery pack. Um, charging speed though, it's 40 minutes. 20 to 80% takes 40 minutes. If, for example, the, the guys, the, the, the vehicle I just drove to the gym and back, uh, the Xpeng G6, it charges in, it does that same charging uh, 20 to 80%. It does that in about 17 minutes. So 20 to 80% in 40 minutes, 115 kilowatt maximum DC fast charging. That is an issue. I mean, if you're doing longer trips, you'd be waiting a long time for that battery pack to charge. Now, if you're not, doesn't matter. In addition though, there is one other cool feature. It has multiple 2.2 kilowatt and 6.6 kilowatt outlets. That's a lot of power you can send out vehicle to load, 6.6 kilowatt. You can then therefore run your house off this vehicle. You can, 6.6 kilowatt, multiple 6.6 and multiple 2.2 kilowatt outlets. In theory, you could use this as vehicle 
to home or vehicle to grid. And all you need to do is basically you can buy that. You can buy like an attachment on Amazon. It costs about $1,000. That enables that to actually function that way. Safe Motors have just revealed the LDV or Maxxis or MG, depending on what country you're in, they're all branded differently. Electric pickup truck or electric ute. It's said to have a thousand kilometers of range. It's got to be out, uh, I believe, it's going to be out this year, in fact. At the latest, it'll be out in places like Australia next year. This electric ute is insane. The reason that LDV and whatever it is, I think it's called Maxxis in the UK, the reason they've been gun discounting their electric utes for by 50%, which is actually a pretty good deal now, 50% discount. The cheapest electric electric car you can buy, period, in New Zealand right now is the LDV electric ute. The reason they're discounting them by 50% is because this thing's coming out and this thing is just going to blow the doors off that old... It's going to make that, that thing look like the pretty bad car it really was. Really what that was was just a diesel ute, diesel pickup truck that's been converted into an EV. The battery pack, you can see it like stuck underneath the bottom of the vehicle. Kind of looks... Doesn't look right. This is a proper ground up EV. This could be one of the best EVs we're going to see, what that we'll see on the market for years. I mean, I've been waiting for this thing. I've seen the specs. I've seen the range. It's meant to have 600 miles or 1,000 kilometers of range. Now, I don't know if that's going to be the case. Whatever the case may be, this actually looks the goods. This looks like the real deal. If you want an electric ute, if you want an electric pickup truck, this might be your best option. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. I've personally driven the internal combustion version of these. They're okay, not great, not terrible. Sake motors, to be honest. Software can be a bit glitchy. Cruise control kind of uh, doesn't work that well. Sometimes goes on and off. Um, they're not, you know, they're good value. Put it that way. You know, you do have to put up with a few quirks, but they're, they're good value. Anyhow, what you want to know, of course, is the details of this vehicle. Apparently, according to a report on the 25th of June, 2023, right? So more than a year ago, people, media in China said this would come with a semi-solid state battery. Now, I don't believe that's actually correct. I believe it's not going to come with a semi-solid state battery, but that's what the media was saying. So um, you're probably going to get more media saying this stuff. They're going to report on this story as if it's true, but I, guys, I don't think that is the case. But I do know some details now that this has been properly revealed in China. This is a global car. It already has a global car name, right? This is not the Chinese name. This The, the actual global name is the Maxxis e Terron 9. So it'll be called in Australia and, and New Zealand, the LDV e, e Terron 9. In Thailand, it will be called the MG e Terron 9. In the UK and in Europe, it will be called the Maxxis e Terran 9. So, yeah, they've already announced it's going everywhere. This is a global car. Why is this a global car? I mean, why is that going to happen so fast? Well, the reason is because the majority of Safe Motors sales for their pickup trucks is actually outside of China. More than 60% of their sales come outside of China. So they're basically, without the global market, this brand would pretty much cease to exist. So, yeah, it's coming. And very, very soon, this is the production version. There was a concept version, which I think looked a little bit better than this, but this is the production version. Now, one, one of the reasons why this doesn't look as good is it doesn't have a lift kit. As you can see, it just looks regular. The, the, the concept version has a big lift kit, has big aggressive off-road tires. That just makes it look way better. And one of the things that's weird about LDV or Maxxis vehicles, I don't know why they do this, but the offset of their wheels looks all wrong. I mean, someone needs to tell them this. The offset of their wheels, they put the wheel right inside the arch. Doesn't look right. I mean, it should be flush with the arch. So that's why this production version of this, the vehicle looks so much uglier than the concept version. You can change that though. Slap a different set of wheels on there with a slightly different offset. You can get a more, a much better look on your, on your vehicle. It's probably range though that I suspect they've done this. As you can see, it has relatively small, looks like 18 inch rims. And that will help with range. You put bigger wheels, bigger tires, you're going to get less range. So what are the details? What, what do we know about this vehicle? Well, apparently, 1,000 kilometers of range. I don't believe that's going to be true. What I'm hearing rumors are from China is it's closer to maximum range about 650 kilometers. About 400 miles. That's pretty good, though. I don't think you need more than that. 
Now this will be the apparently the first medium to large size Chinese brand all electric truck to be exported globally. So they're going out and saying, yeah, this is coming really, really soon. Speaking of size though, it's actually a really good size, I think, because one of the problems with vehicles like the Ford Ranger and the Toyota Hilux is a lot of people complain the tray, I mean, for me, I've tried to put my surfboard in those size vehicles. Volkswagen Amarok, for example, doesn't fit. You can't even fit a surfboard in those vehicles unless you ride a really, really, really small board, right? For the average person, you can't fit stuff in them. Now, this is a bit bigger than those vehicles. It's about 100 millimeters bigger. It's 5,500 meters, millimeters long. So 5.5 meters long. Wheelbase is 3.3 meters. What powers it? It has two motors. Uh, originally the concept vehicle, uh, they may reveal this as like a performance version of the truck of this ute, but the production version at this point in time doesn't have the, the tri-motor 1000 horsepower. It does have a lot of power though. It's got a 138 kilowatt motor on the front axle and 216 kilowatt motor on the rear. So a total of around 350 kilowatt, which is, you know, about 500 horsepower. That's quite a lot of power. This thing's definitely not underpowered, that's for sure. So what else do we know about this vehicle? Well, sales for the pickup trucks for the Maxxis brand, which is otherwise known as LDV and MG, depending on the country, apparently 90% of their sales last year were actually global outside of China. So only 10% of their sales were in China. It shows you just how important this vehicle is for their global market. Apparently, they have 10 new models coming as global vehicles in 2025. 10 new models. Now, this is clearly one of those 10, but, but unfortunately, there's not a whole lot of other details about this vehicle. I estimate that this car will have, most likely, LFP batteries from Cadle. That's the most likely scenario based on what batteries MG and LDV and all that, whatever, what they currently use. Most likely LFP batteries with an energy density of around 200 watt hours per kilogram. Those batteries are capable of 600 kilowatt fast charge, or actually about 560 kilowatt fast charging. I don't think it'll get that kind of fast charging speed, but I do suspect it will have a minimum of 250 kilowatt charging based on reports we've seen from China. So 250 kilowatt charging would mean that it wouldn't be particularly fast to charge a battery. This is gonna have a relatively big battery but you know, get that kind of range, you're gonna need a probably a 100 kilowatt hour size battery, but it will mean that's some pretty decent fast charging and it will mean this is gonna be quite an advanced vehicle. It will have char it does have charging points in the bed and it will have a normal looking interior. Now, the photos you've probably seen, maybe on my previous videos, show the interior looked absolutely insane, just um, wacky looking bucket seats and the interior will look, I think, pretty good. The new LDV, the current Maxxis, their internal combustion interior looks fantastic, much better than 90% of the other pickup trucks and utes on the market. So I suspect the interior will be similar, very, very similar to that. Uh, that would mean it would have two 12 inch screens, one for the driver and one right next to that screen as well. Now the concept version had 1000 horsepower. It had four independent motors. Each of them have two, had 250 horsepower each. Clearly, um, they've decided that isn't necessary. And one of the reasons is that takes up more, more weight, makes the vehicle heavier. And of course, it means it's going to get less range, having all that extra power that you don't really need. Personally, I think 350 kilowatt. I mean, that's more than a Hemi V8, right? That's more power. That's 500 horsepower. I think that's all you're going to need. It's going to have around probably 700 to 800 newton meters of torque. The towing will be phenomenal on this vehicle. But of course, if you tow big things, it doesn't matter what vehicle you're in, if it's in kernel combustion diesel, you're still gonna lose, a, you're still gonna use a lot of juice. As soon as we know more details, I'll have a new video up guys with range of the battery packs. There's gonna be a range of different battery pack sizes. I believe three different battery pack sizes. I just don't know the sizes as of yet. Either way, this is coming soon. I suspect it'll come in probably, well, media reports have said the first quarter of 2025. I'm gonna go with middle of 2025 from what I'm hearing. And I'm really excited to see this. Based on what, I mean, Maxxis is saying, Saic Motors, they're saying this will be the first globally produced electric vehicle, you know, in this category, electric ute. And I know a lot of people hate these sort of vehicles. They hate utes and pickup trucks. I understand that, but people buy millions of these. They are very popular globally. So if we can get people out of diesel ones that are just, you know, clogging up the air and they stink badly, especially, I find Japanese diesel utes seem to stink really, really badly. You just, 
the diesel fumes come from the back of them seems to be terrible. And keep in mind, remember that there is a scandal going on right now with, with Toyota and that their truck brand Hino having um, failed emissions targeting, scanned emissions targeting tests for about t- apparently 12 years. So, I mean, that is a, a consideration we have to, con- we don't want those vehicles on the roads. We want to move to EV electric trucks. And if you know people are going to buy electric, people are going to buy utes, we want them to buy electric ones. They're much, much better for the environment and much better for their experience as well. Let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching.